A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to our video. Here's the task for today. Minimize f of x being equal to x plus 1 over x without making use of calculus. Try it out for yourself. Post a solution down there in the comments. And now we are going to dive right in. By the way, video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over on Brilliant. More information at the end of the video. So actually, my first hunch before minimizing it without using calculus was to use calculus to get a feel for the problem. I mean, <laughs> no one can force me to not use calculus. It's, it's just probably not the nicest thing to do if it says do it without calculus. So since we have a function defined, how do we find the minimum of a function? Well, we first differentiate it, meaning f prime is equal to 1 plus, and it turns into a negative because of the 1 over x. 1 over x, good. Okay, and we want to find the zeros of the derivative function in order for us to find the minimum or maximum value of the original function. So set this equal to 0. What we can do, we can add this part on both sides, giving us overall that um, 1 over x squared is equal to 1. And now we can multiply both sides by x squared, leaving us overall with x squared being equal to 1, and then we can take the square root, giving us two possible values, namely that x, 1 and 2, is equal to positive or negative 1. Now, how do we proceed from here? Well, we need to see which of those x value, um, values actually corresponds to a minimum. So, for that, we differentiate once again, f double prime, and then we plug positive or negative 1 in and see what we are going to get. Differentiating this leads to 1, negative and negative turns positive, plus, and we drag the 2 to the front, to 1 over x to the third power. And now it's pretty... No, the, the 1 disappears. I'm, I'm being stupid here. And now what you're going to see if we plug plus or minus 1 into here, since we can drag the negative sign to the front, in order for us to get a minimum, we need to search for all the values or where this part right here becomes with the values of x plugged in um, positive. So um, that's like the counterintuitive thing with uh, finding minimum and maximum values. So in order for us to do that, we are going to plug positive 1 into here, leaving us overall with 2, which is greater than 0, corresponding to a minimum value. And now if we plug um, 1 into our original equation, this right here is the x value, we are going to get that f of 1 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 1, which is the same as 2. Meaning the minimum of f is at the point 1 and 2. That's the local minimum. And what we are looking for is the number 2 right here. Meaning what we also get is that x plus 1 over x is always greater or equal to 2, where the equality only holds for x and 1 over x being the same value, because we can only get 2 if we plug 1 into here and 1 plus 1 over 1 gives us 2. I think that's pretty clear from the context here. Now this right here is the calculus way. How do we do it without calculus? Well, if you take a look at that, and I put this here for a purpose, how I approached this problem was with the AMGM inequality, because, well, we got an inequality here, also, the number 2 is a pretty clear indicator for the number of samples that we got, namely x and 1 over x. So what we are going to do is we are going to consider two samples. Consider two samples. And those two samples are going to be x and 1 over x. And if we consider two samples, we can plug those into the AMGM inequality and see what we are going to get. Please note that x is not equal to 0. It's always greater than 0 in some kind of way because we can divide by 0. It's not in the domain of our original function. So please just consider this a tiny little bit. Meaning by the AMGM inequality, what we are going to get is AM, arithmetic mean. We are going to add those two together, so x plus 1 over x. And we are going to divide it by the number of samples, namely 2. And for the GM part, geometric mean, this is always the nth root, where n is the number of samples of all the samples multiplied together. So in our case, the nth root becomes the square root. 
of and multiplying the samples together gives, gives us x times 1 over x. x times 1 over x obviously turns into 1 and the square root of 1 is just going to be 1. Well, and lo and behold, if we now multiply both sides by 2, what we are going to get is that x plus 1 over x is greater or equal to 2, where once again equality only holds if x and 1 over x are the same. Um, you could argue that this right here is still making use of calculus because um, the AMG inequality and their proofs in totally ordered fields um, stems from calculus or analysis at that. But I would consider this right here a kind of elementary way, you could say, without making use of strict calculus and in this case limits like, the, like derivatives. Now this right here sparked a different idea. This is one of the approaches that you can take. But um, please consider what I said before. X is not equal to zero. It's not in the domain of our original function. So what we could possibly do is we could multiply both sides by X right here. Since it's also a positive value, we are just going to consider it for the sake of it as being greater or, uh, no, strictly greater than zero. If X is um, greater than zero, then if we multiply both sides by it, our order relation doesn't change. So multiplying both sides by it, gives us x squared plus x times 1 over x is just 1 is greater or equal to 2x. Now subtracting 2x on both sides gives us x squared minus 2x plus 1 is greater or equal to 0. And now you might notice something. This part right here is just a binomial formula. This binomial formula um, takes us to the term that um, x minus 1 squared is greater or equal to 0. And this is obviously true for all the values of x at that. So this right here even holds without any restrictions. But if we wanted to divide both sides by x on our um, order relation, then obviously x must be non-zero. And you can just go this way backwards and then you have another alternative way if we were able to see this part right here at a glance. So what you could do is you could say consider x minus 1 squared and obviously, this is greater or equal to zero. And what we are going to do is we are going to impose another restriction, namely x must be strictly greater than, for example, one or greater or equal to one. It must be greater than zero. And if you do that, then you can say, well, we can use the binomial formula. So that's equivalent to saying that x squared minus two x plus one is greater or equal to zero. Dividing both sides by x because x by our restrictions is not equal to zero gives us x minus 2 plus 1 over x being greater or equal to 0. Now you can add 2 on both sides, giving us x plus 1 over x being greater or equal to 2, which is our desired order relation, giving us the minimum value of our function x plus 1 over x without using calculus. But this is just a really roundabout and kind of circular way, you could say. And I think the AMGM part is the... Um, is the real MVP right here. Oh, do you want to see legs? But I can't show you my feet. Do you want to see a little toe? Oh, here, here it is. Um, do you know who also likes toes? No, I don't think so. But Brian, to take out the contents of today's sponsor, Brian, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now, a different approach to solving this problem would be, I wouldn't call it a strictly mathematic approach, but to just take a look at the plain old graph using Desmos, for example, and just take a look at the lowest point there. It actually shows you there. If you drag your mouse down, you can see where the lowest point in Desmos is. <laughs> the minimum value. But I think that kind of defeats the purpose. But if you are not too much into calculus or maybe algebra and the like, then this could be a valid solution for the problem at hand here. And this is where Brian could also come in. Brian is your source for some of the best online learning platform out there on the internet. Doesn't matter if you want to learn something about mathematics, physics, computer scientists today. Everything in the STEM field, the whole world of STEM, is at your fingertipsies by using Brian. The especially cool thing about their services is that they provide you with nearly 70 interactive courses which make use of graphics in a very playful and interactive manner. Just take a look at a bit of this footage right here. It clearly shows you what Brian and their courses are capable of. If you want to learn something about, I don't know, quantum mechanics or physics today, then they are very good at explaining the topics at hand using visualizations. Want to know more about a function and how it behaves under transformations? Not a problem. 
Print is there for you to let you track their levels around and play around with the parameters of a function and see where it gets you. And they do it all the time. It's amazing and you can easily learn something new on a daily basis by using their interactive learning concept. And if you don't want to take my word for it, just use my link here at the top of the description, brain.org slash flammablemaths. With it, you're going to get 20% of an annual premium subscription if you really make use of this link, but also if you just want to try it out for a certain amount of time. Definitely make sure to just make clicky clicky on the linky linky down there and get free access to the whole landscape of print for a 30 day free trial. But as mentioned before, if you want to turn this into a long term relationship between you and print, make full use of the link and the 200 people to do so get 20% of the annual, pre annual premium subscription as mentioned before. So check it out and support the channel this way. You can also use my QR code, which is somewhere up here. Um, I don't know, I haven't edited the video yet, so I don't know where it is right now, but you are certainly gonna see it in some kind of way. So check it out and support the channel this way. I think that's one thing. If you did enjoy today's video, then uh, stay tuned for the next one. Now in the next video, I wish you guys a fabulous day. See ya.